Hi, everybody, and welcome to Daring Faith, the key to miracles. Let me begin with the theme verse of this series. It's Matthew 9:29. It's one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. Jesus says this, according to your faith, it will be done to you. Friends, that is one of the most amazing statements in scripture. According to your faith, it will be done to you. Jesus is saying, you get to choose how much God blesses your life. You get to choose how much God uses you in his plan for the world. How? According to your faith, it will be done to you. Now, God says, if you got a lot of faith, we'll get a lot done in your life. If you got a little faith, we'll get a little done in your life. If you have got no faith, you get nothing done in your life. According to your faith, it will be done unto you. Faith is the key to fulfilling God's will, God's plan, and God's purpose for your life. You know, we all love movies and stories of daring adventures, a, you know, a daring rescue, a daring mission, a daring escape. We, we love these stories of a daring decision where the hero's chances are zero, but they take the risk anyway. They roll the dice, they go for it. And we love to be motivated by those kind of challenging stories of, of daring. But did you know that the most daring thing you can do with your life is to live completely for Jesus Christ. Today in America and most of the West, we have removed all the danger of following Christ. We've made following Christ safe and predictable. We've made it harmless and innocuous. We've made it bland and boring. Most Christians are afraid to live by their faith. They're afraid to pray brave prayers. They're afraid to share a brave witness. They're afraid to take a brave stand for Jesus Christ in their morals and their ethics and in their relationships and in their business practices. Most Christians are scared to death of doing those things. But you know, where there's no risk, there's no reward. Where there's no faith, there's no miracles. Daring faith is the key to miracles in your life. And if you're not seeing any miracles in your life, it's because you're not stepping out in faith. Now, what is daring faith? It's when you live on the edge of faith, not in the shallows of safe conformity. It's when your life becomes an adventure. You see, your finest hours in life are when you step up, step out, be bold, and take risks in Jesus' name. That's when you're fully alive. That's when your blood is pumping. That's when your heart is racing but you know it's the right thing to do, so you move against your fears and you do it anyway. It's when the hero in your heart shows up and everybody notices. God wants us to be people with daring faith, faith that refuses to hide, refuses to cower while the world goes to hell. God wants us to bravely follow our King, Jesus Christ, into the future that he has planned for us. You know, I love the Lord of the Rings trilogy and then the second series on The Hobbit. And in the climactic battle of The Hobbit uh, trilogy of movies, Thorin, who's the dwarf king, says to his people, will you follow me one last time? Now, they're hopelessly outnumbered, uh, but they lay everything on the line. These dwarves are all in. They're fully committed and they follow their king into battle, and they break out of their fortress, and they charge head on into enemy's ranks. And Bilbo, watching this battle, says to Gandalf in the movie, look, the dwarves are rallying. And Gandalf says, and this is an immortal line to me, they are rallying to their king. They are rallying to their king. I was so moved when I heard that, uh, literally, tears came to my eyes. They're rallying to their king. And I thought, that's what I want to do. And that's what God wants all of us to do. He wants us to rally to our King Jesus Christ. When so many believers today are falling back in fear, God wants us to step out in faith. So let me ask you, what battle are you facing right now? Does God challenge you to be brave in your marriage? Is he challenging you to be brave at work or at school? 
Is he challenging you to be courageous with your kids, with your friends, with your neighbors? Are you all in? Will you rally to your king? For the next six weeks, in these small group uh, sessions, we're going to talk about daring faith, the kind of brave faith that rallies to the king. We're gonna talk about how to have this kind of faith, both in our personal lives and in our life together as a church. You know, the Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And what I want more than anything else for my life and for your life and for the whole church is that we would live faith-filled lives that are pleasing to God by daring and risking having the courage to trust God more than other people choose to trust him for. So for the next 40 days, the next six weeks, your faith is going to be challenged, it's going to be deepened, it's going to be stretched, and it's going to be strengthened like never before. So let's begin. What exactly is faith? Well, I can't describe it in one sentence. That's because faith is like a diamond. It's multifaceted. Faceted. In fact, we're going to have to have several weeks just to look at all the different aspects of faith. We're going to look at six different facets of faith that we find in the Bible in Hebrews chapter 11. Now, we call this chapter, Hebrews 11 in the Bible, God's Hall of Fame because it talks about the great men and women of faith throughout history. Now, I want you to write down these lessons from Hebrews chapter 11. First, write this down. Faith is believing when I don't see it. Faith is believing when I don't see it. Faith is visualizing the future in the present. It's seeing in advance. You know, the Bible says faith is being sure of what we hope for and being certain of what we do not see. You know, a man says today, I'll believe it when I see it. But God says, no, you got it backwards. You will see it when you believe it. There has never been a significant achievement in human history that was not accompanied by faith. Somebody had to believe it before it could be done, before it could be dreamed up, it could be accomplished. When we started Saddleback Church 35 years ago, at our very first, what I call our trial run service, the week before Easter, we had 60 people show up. And I remember saying to them on that practice service, because Sunday, a week later, was going to be our first service on Easter. I said, someday, we're going to own at least 50 acres of land in Orange County. And in that little group of people, everybody laughed. I even laughed because we didn't even have any members yet. But as funny as that was to say, we believed it would happen. And now we're sitting on nearly 500 acres of property in multiple locations in Orange County. You see, nothing happens until somebody believes it's possible. Faith is believing when I don't see it. Number two, Hebrews 11 teaches us that faith is obeying when I don't understand it. Now, a good example of this is Noah. The Bible says it was by faith that Noah built an ark to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about something that had never happened before. Now think about this. The Bible says that before the flood happened, it had never rained on earth, that the earth was watered by a mist that came up from the ground like dew in the morning. So when God said, Noah, I want you to build this big boat because it's gonna flood, Noah said, what's a flood? And God said, it's when you get a lot of rain. And Noah says, what's rain? He had never seen it before. He didn't understand it. But because he had faith, Noah obeyed. He obeyed even though it did not make sense. And he's building this giant boat in the middle of a landlocked country when it had never rained. Another example of this is Abraham. The Bible says in verse 8 of chapter 11 of Hebrews, it was faith that made Abraham obey when God called him to go out to a country which God had promised to give him. He left his own country without knowing where he was going. You know, I think I know a little bit about what Abraham experienced. In 1979, as I was finishing up a master's degree in Fort Worth, Texas, God told me to move my wife, 
and my little four-month-old baby girl in a U-Haul truck to some place called the Saddleback Valley in Orange County, California. Now get this. I was 25 years old. I had never been the senior pastor of a church. I didn't know a single person in the Saddleback Valley. I didn't have any money, and we didn't have a place to live. But God said go. So we did. We did even though it didn't make sense. And I want you to understand that this church was not founded on some grand master plan or master scheme with master funding where everything was well financed and laid out in advance. It wasn't. This church was founded out of a simple act of faith. God said, go, and I did. And I'm so glad that I did. I, I think of all the blessings that I would have missed if I had not obeyed God. All the things that would not have happened, all the people that would not be in heaven, all of the changes and ministries and programs. Faith is believing when I don't see it, and faith is, is acting when I don't understand it. Number three, Hebrews 11 teaches that faith is giving when I don't have it. Did you know that faith and giving go together? Did you know that God uses your finances to test your faith? Have you ever had to decide between tithing and paying a bill? That's a test. God says, who are you going to put first? Now, there are two ways that I can give and you can give. We can give by fear or we can give by faith. Giving by fear is when you look at your bank account and your income and you say, how much can I afford to give? What's safe? What's reasonable? But giving by faith is when you say, God, what do you want to give through me? How much do you want me to trust you for? Now, the Bible says of Abel and his offering, it says, Abel made an offering to God that was a better sacrifice than Cain's. And through his faith, he won God's approval. Notice that verse, through his faith, he won God's approval. You know, Abel didn't do a whole lot except give an offering in faith. And Abel's gift that won God's approval was made in faith. It wasn't the amount of his offering it was the attitude behind it. it. He gave it in faith. You see, it's one thing to give when you got it to spare, but it's another thing to give when you don't know where it's coming from. And that is giving by faith. Some people say, you know, God, you give first to me and, and then I'll give back. But that's not faith. Faith is giving in advance. It's like planting a seed and then expecting the harvest. Faith is giving when I don't have it. It's one of the definitions of faith. Number four, Hebrews 11 teaches us that faith is persisting when I don't feel like it. Persisting when I don't feel like it. Faith is enduring. It is diligent. It's determined. It's persistent. You see, this is the exact opposite of what our culture says. Our culture today says, base your decisions on how you feel. If it feels good, do it. Live by your emotions. And, uh, you know, as a result, uh, we end up being manipulated by our moods. But mature people live by their commitments, not their emotions. The secret of success is not doing whatever you feel like doing. Anybody can do that. That's a formula for failure. The secret of success is doing what most people don't feel like doing at all. It's doing, being willing to do what other people are unwilling to do. You know, you don't become an Olympic athlete by working out only when you feel like it. You don't become a master musician by practicing only when you feel like it. You don't learn courageous faith by obeying, obeying God only when you feel like it. Faith is being persistent. It's doing the right thing even when you feel like giving up. Now, how do you develop that kind of persistence? Well, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27, it talks about Moses' persistence. It says, it was by faith that Moses left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He's talking about Pharaoh. He held to his purpose like someone who could see the invisible. Now look at the last sentence in that verse. It says this, he held to his purpose like someone who could see the invisible. That's the key to persistent faith. It's what you're focused on. Keep your eyes on God. 
You can't see God, but you keep your eyes focused on him. Make him the focus of your attention. As the old saying goes, if you look at your problem, you'll be distressed. If you look within, you'll be depressed. But if you look at Christ, you'll be at rest. It's all about what you have your eyes on. Focus. Now, there are two more facets of faith that I want you to consider from Hebrews 11. Here's the next one. Faith is thanking God before I receive it. Thanking God before I receive it. Now, a good example of this is the story of Joshua. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 30, it says this, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. Do you remember this story? The Israelites had marched silently around Jericho, a walled city, the most fortified city in the world at that time, for six days. And on the seventh day, they marched around it seven times, and they gave a loud shout of praise to God for the victory that he was about to give them. In other words, they were thanking God before they had received the answer to their prayers. They were praising God in advance for days and days and days, thanking God in advance for delivering the city into their hands. And then, then the walls fell down. Now, follow me on this. If you wait until after a prayer has been answered to thank God, that's gratitude. That's, that's thanksgiving. But that's not faith. Gratitude is saying, thank you, God, for what you did. But faith is thanking God in advance. Let me say that again. Faith is thanking God in advance for what you believe he's going to do. You thank him that the answer is already on its way, even before you see it. Faith means if God tells you to go after Moby Dick in a rowboat, you take the tartar sauce with you. Now, number six, faith is trusting even if I don't get it. Faith is trusting God even if I don't get it, get the answer to my prayer. Now, let me tell you two facts about God. First, God hears and answers every single prayer. Number two, God does not always answer the way you want him to answer. Have you found that to be true? Of course you have. Sometimes God's answer is yes to a prayer. Sometimes God's answer is no. And sometimes God's answer is, you gotta be kidding. <laughs> and sometimes God's answer is, not yet. And sometimes God's answer is, I've got a better idea. Does a parent give a child everything that child asks for? Of course not. Sometimes it wouldn't be the loving thing to do if you gave your child what they keep asking for. And God doesn't give you everything you ask for either. Why? Is it because he doesn't love you? Of course not. It's because he does love you. It's because he knows what's best for you. God is not a vending machine where you pop in a prayer and you get whatever you want. A vending machine will you know, give you stuff that'll kill you. God says, I will meet all your needs. He says that in Philippians, but he doesn't say, I will meet all your greeds. And there's a big difference, a huge difference. So what do you do when God says no? Do you get mad at him? Do you throw a pity party? Or do you just trust him to do what is best for you? Sometimes we pray for God to remove a difficulty or a problem or or you know, some kind of pressure in our life. And instead of taking it away, God gives you the strength to go through that problem. And why does he do that? Because God is more interested in your character than he is in your comfort. He's more interested in making you holy than in making you happy. If God took away all your problems, you'd be a spoiled brat. But God wants you to have character, and he wants you to have strength, and he wants you to have maturity. So he lets you go through these tough times and then gives you the ability to handle them instead of removing them. Now, this hall of fame of great men and women of faith in Hebrews 11 closes with a list of people who did not get what they asked for in prayer. In fact, many of them suffered for their faith. Violent deaths. It says some were tortured, some were flogged, some were put in prison. The Bible says some of these heroes of faith were, were stoned to death or sawed in two. 
The Bible tells us some were destitute, they were very poor, they were persecuted, they were mistreated. And the Bible says this, quote, the world was not worthy of them. They were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what God had promised. God had planned something better. You know, there are over 7,000 promises in the Bible. We're gonna talk about that in another session. But God doesn't have to fulfill all of them on this lifetime. He's got all of eternity to fulfill them. Living by faith does not exempt you from problems. Just ask the Christians living in the Middle East and in Northern Africa and in parts of Asia who are suffering persecution and even death right now. Are they suffering because they don't have any faith? Absolutely not. The Bible says they're heroes of the faith. Anybody can trust God when things are going great. Anybody can give uh, when they've got extra money to give. It's when you don't have anything to give. Anybody can persist when life is easy. And anybody can believe uh, when the answer is right there uh, in front of them. But the real faith, the true faith, the daring faith, the faith that risks is built in the valleys of life. And sometimes it's trusting God when I don't get what I asked for. So how does God build our faith? Well, he does it two ways. First, he builds your faith through his word. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's in Romans. So the more you get into this book, the Bible, the more you get into this book, the more your faith is going to grow. That's why during this series, we are going to uh, memorize a Bible verse every week during this study. We hide God's word in our heart. And our memory verse this week is the one we started with, Matthew 9, 29. Let's read it aloud together, okay? Right there in your small group, I want everybody to read this on the screen aloud together. According to your faith, will it be done to you? Matthew 9, 29. Now, it's always important to memorize the address. In other words, where you can find the verse in the Bible. So let's read it again. According to your faith, will it be done to you? And where is that found? Matthew 9, 29. Now, during this series, if you'll memorize all six memory verses during the next six sessions together, your faith is gonna grow deeper and stronger because remember, faith comes through hearing the word of God. The other way, the second way that God builds your faith is through trials and through tests. 1 Peter 1, 7 says this, these trials, the ones that you're going through, they're only there to test your faith. So if your faith remains strong after being tried in the test tube of fiery trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day of his return when Jesus comes back. It may be that some of you watching this right now are ready to quit. You feel like giving up. You feel like giving up maybe, I don't know, on your marriage or on your kids or on your dream or your career. Maybe you feel like giving up on your education. Some of you think your finances are hopeless. You think your future is hopeless. And you're saying, you know what? Things are never gonna change. It's never gonna get any better. But I believe God wants to say to you, hang in there, take courage, don't give up. Hold on to your convictions, stay true to your commitments. Keep believing when you don't see it and keep obeying when you don't understand it and keep giving when you don't have it and keep persisting when you don't even feel like it and keep thanking God before you receive it and keep trusting God even if you don't get it. If you will work on these six areas of your faith that I've just taught you about today, God will make a way and he will bring you through the difficult trial that you go through in life. I wanna ask you to make a commitment. And the commitment is that in these next six weeks together, you will attend all of the weekend services at church during this campaign and that you will come to all of your small group meetings. 
that you will read the daily devotions in your workbook, and that you will apply these lessons in your life in practical ways. If you'll do that, I want you to commit that to God in your heart right now. So let's bow for prayer, okay? Would you bow your heads? And with your head bowed, just say something like this. Dear God, I, I know that without faith, it's impossible to please you. Just say that. I know that without faith, it's impossible to please you. I, I want to develop a more courageous faith, a daring faith. So I commit myself to these next 40 days to getting to know you and your word and growing in faith. Help me to rally to you, my king. Help me to grow in my faith. Now let's get specific. Pray this in your heart. Dear God, help me to believe when I don't see it. Help me to, to obey when I don't understand it. Help me to give and be generous when I don't have it. Help me to persist when I don't feel like it and I want to give up. And help me to thank you before I receive it. And dear God, help me to trust you even if I don't get it. I know, dear Lord, you want what's best for me. And I want to follow you with all my heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.